What is happening, everyone? Welcome back to Anchorage in the Storm. We made it to day seven of part five, which is the wrap up for part five as a whole. And I'm so proud and I want to thank God in advance for this message, reflection, devotion, and Bible study. If you hear some noise in the background, I did just get some new neighbors and they celebrate all times of the day. Uh, but who wouldn't when you get a new home? Amen. So excuse the noise in advance if it becomes louder than my voice. And uh, today we're going to be in day seven talking about our friend forever, Jesus. And then in our Bible study, we're going to be reading out of chapters Four from Philippines, 147 from Psalms, 40 from Isaiah, and four from James. If you are watching, I want you to know that I love you and I hope that this is feeding you the way it is feeding me and continue to do so because we are almost halfway done anchoring our storms. Amen. Whether you are some whether you are someone who has given up on trying to open up and trust people or simply struggle to do so, knowing that God is our primary source of love and acceptance not only changes our perspective of self, but also the way we see others. It is important to surround yourself with people who encourage, comfort, build up, and direct you towards God. Experiencing disappointment and worry when faced with a difficult situation is only natural, but in these moments, it is crucial to focus on things that uplift and remind us of God's faithfulness and goodness rather than the things that cause us to remain in that slump. When you find yourself in a place of discouragement and hopelessness, start worshiping God in the midst of the problem. Don't wait to get your breakthrough before you can approach God. We don't go to him in order to receive something for ourselves. Rather, we should approach him simply because there is no better place to be than his presence. We must learn to dwell in this secret place regardless of our circumstances. He is good despite the storms and seasons of our life, and he loves us regardless of our perceptions and insecurities about ourselves. What causes you to desire, what's, what causes you to desire and long for his presence? Whether it is a time of intimate worship, meditation, on his word, or even engaging in a community that points you towards God, always go back to that place of surrender. The more we dwell on the infirmity of our problems or the extent of our insecurities, the more we are enslaved by them. It is not that God becomes distant in those times. We just so blind we are just so blinded by our worries that we cannot perceive and reach out to God even when he's right next to us. For the woman with the issue of blood, there may have been a lot of friends that she could open up her heart to. Maybe she was left to suffer in the misery of her thoughts. I'm sorry, in the misery or her thoughts and the pain of affliction. But when she heard about Jesus, the harshness of her circumstances, the hurtful stares and curses of the people around her and the exhaustive struggle to get there didn't matter to her. All that mattered was that she could approach this man. She could reach out and plead for help. She believed by faith that in order to be healed, all she had to do was touch the hem of his robe. In the end, it was his faith. It was this faith that brought her deliverance. Amen. Some friends stay with you for life while some pass with the seasons, but God promises to stay by your side forever. He promises to love you and cherish you even when you don't see yourself to be worthy of it. Don't worry about whether you are good enough or even worthy of love. Let God work in your heart and mold you to be the person he made you to be. If you are simply willing to be embraced and swept away in, his, in, in this tide of overwhelming love, nothing can disturb your peace and purpose. So that's the wrap up and that's a lot to unpack you guys. So reflection says, are you willing to find a friend in Jesus to trust in him and walk every day with him by your side? 
Even if no one understands you, he does. And that's bringing me back to the woman with the issue of blood, right? He, this word is saying that she could have trusted her friends or she could have trusted other people to keep trying to come up with the problem of why she bled. Why, why is this problem so ongoing? But as soon as she heard about God, she fixed her focus on touching his, the hem of his robe. She did not worry about what anybody else had to say. She focused her mind on getting to God. And that's what we need to do sometimes where we may be in a situation that's familiar or a situation that's new. We always find ourselves texting a friend calling somebody that nine times out of ten can't help or do nothing with the information amen but when we go to god and pray and sit in silence and pray again and sit in silence and pray because we have to wait to listen sometimes he doesn't answer our prayers right away we will find the answer to our problem directly from our creator the one who knows us best amen i'm gonna be preaching in a minute because that's good. I've had a situation where I literally had to pull over to the side of the road because something was bothering me so bad. Somebody was trying to reach out to me that I knew meant no well, no good. And so I was about to text some of my friends say like, look, this is what I'm talking about. I was about to rant and say, look, screenshot this. And this is what I mean when I said this person means no well. They, they are trying to use certain words to get me to respond. And in that moment, I say, you know what? I'm going to give it to you, God. Because only you know what I should respond to and not respond to. And guess what? That person has not bothered me since. I said nothing. I prayed. I took it to God. And he just, he's so awesome. He's so loving. He cares for us. He don't want us to be in distress. He just wants us to seek direction from him. And it shall be so. His will, his way. Amen. I'm getting excited because that person really didn't bother, not bother me since. And guess what? When they bother me again, because they probably will, I will be ready. I will be armored up in the word of God. I will have my full armor on. Amen. Oh, guys, comment down below if you have um, been in a situation where you had to just trust God. Your everyday walk by just trusting God, giving him every rent, every part of venting that, that you want to give to somebody they may that person might be at work they might be getting ready for bed they might have just got up they tend to their kids and here you go about to bother them with a problem that only god can solve that's how i had to look at it like this person can't help me but they could do with whatever they want with the information and i don't even know if this person my friend for real so they might go and laugh joke about what i just said you know so we have to take these things into consideration when we are in the midst of trusting God, walking with God. This is what he wants us to do. He's our friend. He wants us to treat him as such because he will be there with nobody else. Nobody else will. Amen. So going into Bible study, Philippians chapter four and verse six says, do not be anxious about anything. Instead, in every situation through prayer and, and petition, I'm about to say petition. Through prayer and petition with thanksgiving, tell your request to God and the peace of God and sur that surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Psalms 147 and verse 3 says, he heals the brokenhearted and bandages their wounds. Amen. Now, Isaiah verse 40 and um, sorry, verse 28 of chapter 40 says, do you not know? Have you not heard? The Lord is an eternal God, the creator of the whole earth. He does not get tired or weary. There is no limits to his wisdom. He gives strength to those who are tired. To the, to the ones who lack power, he gives renewed energy. Even youths get tired and weary. Even strong young men clumsily stumble. But those who wait for the Lord help find renewed strength. The Lord's help. Find renewed strength. They rise up as if they had eagle's wings. They run without getting weary. They walk without getting tired. And lastly, in James 4, verse 8, it says, Draw near to God and he will draw to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and make your hearts pure, you double-minded. Amen. That is the wrap up for the friend we have in Jesus, our forever friend. Jesus wants us to know all of these things. He wants us to know about the woman that had the issue of blood. He wants us to um, 
get to know ourselves and our struggles where we can lay them in front of him because we should trust him the most with what we go through. When we hit that rock bottom, there is no there is no help like the help of God. Amen. So Father God, I want to pray today that you just remind us how good you are. Remind us that you've been the same yesterday, today, and you will be tomorrow, God, for the grace of you that you bring tomorrow to open our eyes and see that you are all we have. Anytime we leave the house, we need you, God. Anytime we lay down to go to sleep, we need you, God. Anytime we get out of bed, we need you, God. Anytime we go to eat, we need you, God. For you feed us the ultimate feast of life. And I'm asking you today that you touch the hearts and minds of everybody in the world. In Jesus' name, amen.